Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Mateo's Corner. Um, we are here with Injustice 1 after not playing it for quite a long time. A couple years now, in fact, um, since I did the arcade mode and story mode with my buddy Stuart. I, uh, I wanted to jump back into this game to do a roster discussion because um, I was going to do this a while back and then I decided not to because I was like, it was a kind of a boring video, because it was just me going, well, of course this guy would be in the game, you know, he, he's a popular character. However, I have learned something fascinating about this game. And I decided, what better way to uh, delve into this game than to go into that little backstory. So, y'all ever heard of a game called uh, MK vs. DC? It was a game on PS3 and the 360. It was Midway's last big game, I think, with Warner Brothers before uh, Midway closed. And then the people who made Mortal Kombat made their own team, which is now the Realm Studios, who made this game. Now, of course, you're probably thinking, oh, well, he's just going to say, you know, that, oh, well, the history of MK versus DC. Uh, actually, no. I'm actually getting into this character roster because I don't think you guys realize this but every character besides Darkseid that appeared in in in, in uh, MK versus DC is actually here in Injustice and not just that but some of the planned DLC that was going to be a part of MK versus DC is also in this game um so to start, uh, the characters that were in MK vs. DC, of course, were Batman, uh, the, F the Flash, Cyborg. Wait, was Cyborg in MK vs. DC? No, he wasn't. Uh, Superman, Wonder Woman, uh, Green Lantern, Shazam, and then we had uh, Joker, we had Lex Luthor, Catwoman, Deathstroke. And I think... That was it from the original game in terms of like who exactly was there because mk had you know scorpion who haha there he is scorpion sub-zero Liu kang katana sonya Jax, kano did i already say shang Tsung? and then shao Kahn. nine one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that makes sense. A ten. No, there must have been. No, there were ten characters. So wait. So Mortal Kombat had Liu Kang, Jax, Sonya, Katana, Raiden. Oh, that's probably who I was missing. Shang Tsung, Scorpion Sub Zero, Shao Kahn, Kano. And Baraka. There we go. That that was it. So it was 10 each. Now, we all know that these characters are definitely going to be in a fighting game of DC Comics, right? I mean, Batman, The Flash, Superman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, you know, Joker. You know, th these are characters that you just expect in a game. Any game, crossover or otherwise, of DC Comics. Those are your big characters. But then uh, they kind of threw us for a loop a little bit, though, because they added some new characters who weren't even supposed to be added into the MK versus DC DLC. I don't remember exactly everybody that was supposed to be DLC, but I know Martian Manhunter was planned. Um, I know Harley Quinn was planned. Uh, Doomsday was planned. I think Black Adam and Sinestro were also planned. Maybe even Lobo? I don't remember exactly everyone that was on this roster. Oh, yeah. You know who else was planned? Aquaman. He was planned to be in the game. Um, some other characters that we would have seen would have been Mr. McPixel or Mc McFixit or whatever. The, the little imp guy that's from the, the alternate dimension where you have to say his name backwards for him to go away. He was planned to be a character. Um, on the Mortal Kombat side, we were supposed to get Goro, Reptile... Uh, Quan Chi, because he was in story mode, so they were going to add him in. They were, they were going to get 
a ton of characters. You know, I, I find that to be kind of fascinating that they actually planned more story mode DLC for the DLC characters themselves. And it was going to be this big undertaking. And it, it kind of sucks that we never got like a remake of MK versus DC with the Injustice and MKX, MK11, MK9 engine. Like of how they fight and stuff. Not not just the engine, but like in terms of gameplay. Because I think... I, I think they could really make it work. You know, I, I really do. But anyway, so that was all the characters that was supposed to be in the game. And like I said, they, they appeared in Injustice, right? It's, it can't be a coincidence, right? Th this can't be a coincidence that they put the characters in. Some of these characters like Marshmallow, they were probably already pretty much done when MK versus DC was happening. I mean, it, it's obvious, right? That they were like, well, let's just put them in the game. So, what about the rest of the characters, though? Um, let's talk about those. So, we already know, you know, Batman, Flash, those characters have to be in Nightwing, though. Very interesting um, idea to put Nightwing in the game and not Robin. Especially because, you know, you have all of the Teen... Almost. Not all the Teen Titans, but most of the Teen Titans are here. You've got Raven, you've got Cyborg, Robin, a.k.a. Nightwing is here. There's no Beast Boy. Uh, Starfire is in the second one, but she's not in this one because she's su supposedly dead or whatever in terms of the game. Um, but if you play story mode, you actually get Damian Wayne as Nightwing, which I thought was interesting because then you go to Injustice 2 and it's it's younger Robin. <laughs> so I don't understand how that works. But um, I think Nightwing's cool. I mean, it, it makes sense why this version of the characters here, if you have all the other Titan characters... Um, I mean, I think at the time, too, the only Robin... I don't think... I don't think Damien was that hyped up yet to be, like, in good public opinion. I think he was still starting out as Robin when this came out. I don't even remember. But, yeah. So, if anything, yeah, Nightwing makes sense. Um, Cyborg and Raven, they're the Teen Titans. Teen Titans are always a popular team, of course. And Cyborg's actually a really big Justice League member anyway. So, yeah, adding Raven in, you know, Teen Titans is still a big show, big franchise for them, um, very popular. Green Arrow, yes, Green Arrow has to be in here because he, he's a Justice League member that everyone knows. The Arrow TV show was big. They even put a costume of the Arrowverse, Air, Green Arrow, on this one with even, like, the voice actor and everything, so. Um... Martian Manhunter, I'm glad he's in the game. I, I feel like he brings a lot of diversity and, like, moves. He's basically, like, the doll sim of this game, and I really appreciate that because a lot of... It's what I like about Injustice 1 and s some parts of 2. A lot of characters are really fun to play, and he's really fun to play. You have to be kind of good at him, but he's really fun. And I like his, his uh, design. I like the little thin things on his arms and stuff. Uh, yeah, Aquaman has to be in here. He's a Justice League member. Zatanna, Zatanna was a very interesting choice. Because, yeah, she's a big Justice League member, but for a big fighting game like, you know, Injustice, you wouldn't think of Zatanna right off the bat, right? Well, I mean, clearly she was a DLC character, but I'm, I am glad she's here. One, unique moveset, very different. Two, um, she, I actually know Zatanna a lot in the comics and even like one of the older games um justice league heroes which was a x-men legends style like you make a team and you run around and do things satana was playable in that game so it's not like she's not a popular she's a very popular character at least i think she still is um and also she's she's just a very unique kind of character too so yeah move set wise i'm glad she's here she's different brings a lot to the table um this one was actually a big surprise uh, Miss Batgirl. I love playing as Batgirl. She's super fun to play as. But it is interesting because in the comics she's Oracle and she never like I, I think though she got a suit that lets her like walk around because she is in a wheelchair most of the time as Oracle. But I think she does have a thing where like she puts her body in a suit and I don't remember exactly how it works. But she's super fun. But again, you wouldn't think about putting her in, in the game because, I mean, when you think of big, giant Justice League game, you don't really think about Batgirl being a part of the roster, right? You think of other characters like Booster Gold or um, the Blue Beetle, right? You think of um, K 
characters like that. But uh, I'm I'm glad Batgirl's here. She's a fun character. And, um, yeah. Sometimes having fun characters is better than, than anything, right? So, uh, Green Lantern, we already... We, we don't need to talk about these... Hot girl, um, yeah, these three, we don't need to really talk about them that much because it, they're, I mean, the Justice League cartoon in the 90s made Hot Girl a staple of the team, and, 90s or 2000s, and then you have, you know, Shazam and Green Lantern, these are both very high level, um, Justice League members that are always in stuff. I mean, heck, he was, they even put Shazam in... MK versus DC for the magic aspect. So I guess, I think it was because magic-wise he was supposed to fight Shang Tsung, I think? Anyway. Uh, Villain-wise, though, yeah, Harley, Joker, Lex Luthor, um, Doomsday, even, like, Deathstroke. You, you kind of expect them to be in a big, giant fighting game of Injustice. Uh, Bane, if not Doomsday, Bane, right? Like, the, these two, I feel, are... Sin I mean, even their pose is the same. Look at it. Even their pose is pretty similar. These two, I feel like, yeah, of course, you know, you would put them in a Justice League fighting game. I mean, they're they're the big brute characters. People like playing as them. They're super fun. Um, Solomon Grundy, though. Very interesting that um, Solomon Grundy... Um, is here because I, I think he's a popular Justice League villain, but I don't think he's, how do I put this? Like, well, no, I, I guess because he's like their version of the Hulk. So I guess it, it makes some sense why he's here actually. And he's in like after Arkham City, him being a boss in Arkham City and everything like in the night in the TV show of Justice League that they had. Um, yeah, I, I, Solomon Grundy was in that show quite a few times and people liked seeing him so yeah I, I guess that makes sense why he's there this character though I am so glad they put Lobo in this game I'm surprised they don't put Lobo in more video games to be honest and more things because Lobo is just a super fun character and yeah even like his moveset super fun he, he drips with personality I just I we need more Lobo we were actually supposed to get a Lobo video game at one point, and it never came out, and it makes me sad because it would have been fun to play. Um, let's see. You know, I think the only person I really don't like on this roster is Zod. I, I, I really think Zod was only put into this game because of Man of Steel coming out and him being the main villain. I mean, heck, he even has a costume... If you look at it, he even has the costume for Man of Steel from the actor. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he plays differently than Superman, and that's kind of nice. Because, like, it's like Supergirl in Injustice 2, right? Where you have Supergirl and you have Superman. But he was a DLC character, right? And, and when DLC characters are thrown in, into the mix, you have to think about them differently. Because... These characters were already planned to be in the game, right? And whether you like them or not, they all do play somewhat differently. Except for maybe these two play a little similarly. This guy has different, unique things about him. But most of the characters here, every character on the hero side, and like 99%, actually most, if not all, of the villain side play uniquely. They play differently. They, they No one feels like, you know... They're all unique characters. They're, they're, there's no doubles of like, oh, there's two Kryptonians. I mean, th the only thing, again, is Batgirl and Zod. These are the only two that I find kind of weird. feel like, I'm not saying that I'm mad that Zod's in the game, but I feel like Zod maybe should have been in the sequel when Man of Steel wasn't just out and it's not just like... It, it's like Enchantress in Injustice 2, right? We all know Enchantress was in Injustice 2, and they had a lot of Suicide Squad members in Injustice 2 because the Suicide Squad movie was out. I mean, we all know this. Not saying Enchantress is a bad character, not saying Zod's a bad character, but it's obvious that's what they were going for, right? Um, I feel like, again, I feel like Zod is mostly just a Superman villain. Yeah, anyway, that's all I gotta say about Zod. 
All right, so Lex Luthor. Um, yeah, he. It's Lex Luthor. He's in the game Catwoman. You know, it, it's funny. Because when you think about characters that are Justice League, like big Justice League characters, you don't really think about Catwoman really, like, being a big Justice League level threat. However, because she was in MK vs. DC and she has her own comic book line and she's very popular, it makes sense why she's in the game. Uh, Deathstroke, yep, has to be in the game. He, he is a very high level um, Justice League, Batman, Teen Titans villain. Makes total sense. Uh, we already talked about Doomsday. Now, this was very interesting, Killer Frost. I like Killer Frost. I like her as a character. I like her in the comics and the TV shows and the movies. Assault on Arkham, she was a cool character. Um, Killer Frost is really cool. But again, uh, not my first choice for a Justice League fighting game, but I'm really happy that she's in the game. I, I, I feel like she brings a lot of uh, uniqueness to the table, especially because she's an ice user, and we all know Netherrealm loves people that use ice powers and people that have fire powers. And Scorpion Sub-Zero, right? Makes total sense. Yeah, so Ares, uh, Ares makes sense. Why he's in the game. Um, big high level justice league threat and he's a wonder woman villain and it's nice to see a diversity of villains for the roster because we have a superman villain we have some batman villains we have a teen titans villain we've got a super couple superman villains i forget killer frost is flash no i forget what killer frost associates with but uh aries is a wonder woman villain and then we have a, a black uh shazam villain a green lantern villain and then we got another big Batman character. Um, but we're going to wait on these three because first I want to talk about this. So Scorpion. Scorpion um, fights like how he does in MK9, which makes sense because I think this came out after MK9. I'm pretty sure this came out after MK9. No, it, no, it had to have. And um, now I think about it. And uh, he got a redesign. And I don't actually like his redesign. I like parts of it. I don't get why he has that single blade on his wrist and not the other wrist. I, I don't... I think if they took that off, it would have made it look a lot more streamlined. But this this was Scorpion from MK9, right? This is when they tried to include Scorpion motifs into his design and the the weird kind of like... I, I, I think it's a little much. And like the feet. The feet thing look a little weird. I like parts of the design... But I don't like, I, I mostly do not like this design. And I really wish that they gave you an MK9 skin or something. Because even like, like I, I don't get why the DLC people never got costumes. The only DLC character to get costume was Zod. And I feel like that's dumb. Everybody should have had at least one other costume. But, um, but yeah, I mean, Scorpion makes sense. He's the figure, he and Sub-Zero are both the figureheads of MK. And Sub-Zero and Ray didn't show up in Injustice 2, so it makes sense. And Scorpion being the first pick makes sense because he's Ed Boon's favorite, right? So, yeah, I I like how he's in the game. It makes sense, but I don't really like his design. All right, last three. Uh, Sinestro makes sense. He's the big Green Lantern villain. Um, he's like the villain you think of, of when you think of how uh, when you think of Hal Jordan Green Lantern at least Sinestro is like the big one uh Black Adam makes sense I mean you, you have to kind of balance it if you have Shazam and Black Adam um and Bane is Bane I mean there's not much I can really say about Bane Bane is Bane he's He's just the big bruiser that you put in every game if you need a big bruiser character and you're and you want to keep it very diverse because he's fought everybody. But he's mostly a Batman villain, but it takes a lot of people to take him down sometimes. Um So yeah, after all that is said and done, uh I I personally feel like the roster's pretty good for a first Justice like big Justice League fighting game since like I think the Super Nintendo era with Task Force. Um, 
I like how they they tried to add a lot of different team like character like it was nice to see characters like Hot Girl and Raven and even like Nightwing and um, again like Zatanna uh, be represented in this game because the, they could have just went with people that were popular from the Justice League cartoon from the 90s and early 2000s and called it a day, right? I I don't know why Martian Manhunter wasn't in the main roster. Um, but I guess story-wise, they, they wanted it to be that way. Here, though, the only character I'm really having a problem with is Zod. Now, granted, Solomon Grundy, Bane, and Doomsday being here don't make a lot of sense because you have three big giant guys here and no big giant character over here, which they easily could have done. Um, but, yeah, the only one I don't like is Zod, which I think is ironic because he is a fun character, and I think if they put him... As in the game, in like the second game. See, and that's the thing. If they put Zod in Injustice 2 with Brainiac and Supergirl, it would have been very interesting to see that dynamic, you know, of like Supergirl and Superman, Zod and Brainiac, where like Brainiac, or no, Zod wants to take over like Brainiac and he's like, oh, well, maybe I'll help Brainiac out. Or maybe he's a captive of Brainiac and then he gets let loose and then he causes stuff. I mean, that could have been Injustice 2 worthy stuff, right? Having Zod in the game, but yeah, it's just, it feels weird when it com this character comes out so, when a mo when that movie came out and he's the only one with a DLC skin, like, it's kind of weird, right? I do like how he plays, though, don't get me wrong, but, um, anyway, um, I do find, again, though, I find it fascinating that most of the characters that they planned for MK versus DC dlc wise ended up in this game and um I, I i do appreciate how they tried to keep the roster very diverse with people like lobo and you know killer frost and you know they they brought back hot girl which no one thought she was going to be in a game after the cartoon was done and yeah so it's 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 kind of cool seeing all that um anyway that is all the time we have for today. Uh, thank you all so much for joining me in this discussion. Hope you all have a good one. I will see you guys next time. Y'all take care.